The History of the Titanic The Titanic, emblem of the Belle Epoque, was a manifestation of luxury and technological advancement whose maiden voyage ended in tragedy in the North Atlantic. This video briefly narrates its history, from conception to legacy, highlighting the heroism and lessons derived from its sinking. Through the Titanic, we contemplate the balance between human advancement and respect for natural forces, an enduring reminder of our vulnerability and resilience. Chapter 1 – The Dreams of the Belle Epoque At the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries, Europe and North America experienced an era of unprecedented optimism, known as the Belle Epoque. It was a period marked by technological progress, cultural flourishing, and a sense of infinite possibility. People were fascinated by advancements in technology, from the automobile to the telegraph, to electricity beginning to spectacularly light up cities. In this context of innovation and progress, the desire for luxury, speed, and conquering new horizons was emblematically manifested in the conception of the Titanic. The ship was intended to be not only the largest and most luxurious transatlantic of its time, but also a symbol of human achievements and dominance over nature. The idea of the Titanic was born at a dinner between J. Bruce Ismay, president of the White Star Line, and Lord Peary, chairman of the Harland and Wolfe shipyards. Both shared a bold vision, to build a series of ocean liners that would have no rival in size, luxury, or comfort. Thus, the Titanic was conceived not merely as a means of transport, but as a floating palace that would represent the pinnacle of luxury and engineering of the era. This dream was rooted in the ethos of the Belle Epoque, a time when it seemed humanity was on the verge of conquering every corner of the globe and solving the universe's mysteries. The Titanic would be its standard bearer, carrying its passengers not just across the Atlantic, but into a new era of limitless wonders. Chapter 2 Design and Construction of the Giant The design and construction process of the Titanic was an unprecedented feat of engineering and logistics. At the Harland and Wolfe shipyards in Belfast, Ireland, the best engineers and craftsmen of the time congregated to turn an ambitious vision into reality. The project was overseen by Thomas Andrews, the chief naval architect of Harland and Wolfe, who dedicated himself with passion to every detail of the ship's design. The construction of the Titanic began on March 31, 1909. It was a spectacle of modernity, with more than 3,000 men working tirelessly to assemble the steel colossus. The scale of the project was such that a new type of crane, the Errol Gantry Crane, was specifically designed for this project, underscoring the scale and innovation that the Titanic represented. The Titanic's design incorporated revolutionary technological advancements for the time, including watertight compartments and an electrically controlled watertight door system, intended to improve the ship's safety. Moreover, its propulsion system combined two steam expansion engines with a low-pressure turbine, allowing it to reach impressive speeds for a ship of its size. Throughout its construction, the Titanic captured the public's imagination, with crowds flocking to Belfast to witness the birth of this sea giant. The construction was not only a testament to advanced engineering and design, but also to the hard work and skill of the workers who dedicated their days and nights to making this Belle Epoque dream a reality. Chapter 3 – A Colossus Ready to Set Sail The final preparations for the Titanic's maiden voyage reflected the anticipation and excitement surrounding this event. After successfully completing its sea trials, the ship was ready to depart from Southampton for New York on April 10, 1912. The crew selection was meticulous, ensuring that only the most experienced sailors and service staff were part of this historic journey. The loading of supplies and passengers was a spectacle in and of itself. From fine china and glassware to tons of coal and fresh provisions, every item was carefully selected to ensure the utmost luxury and comfort during the crossing. The arrival of passengers, which included some of the most prominent figures of the era, was a parade of elegance and anticipation. The night before departure, Captain Edward J. Smith reflected on the magnitude of his task. Though he was an experienced mariner, the responsibility of commanding the world's largest and most luxurious ship weighed heavily on his shoulders. However, 
Confidence in the Titanic's engineering and his experience provided him with a sense of determination and optimism. Thus, with everything ready for departure, the Titanic was not just a ship. It was the culmination of a dream, a testament to human ingenuity, and a symbol of the golden age of the Belle Epoque. The expectation was palpable, not only among those on board but around the world, eager to see how far this leviathan of the seas could go. Chapter 4. Passengers and Lives Between Decks Aboard the Titanic, the social structure of the time was clearly reflected in the arrangement of its decks and accommodations. From the opulent first-class suites to the modest third-class cabins, the ship was a microcosm of early 20th century society. First-class passengers enjoyed unimaginable luxuries, with rooms decorated with the finest furnishings, restaurants serving high-quality cooking, and salons where elegant parties were held. Among them were magnates, aristocrats, and celebrities of the era, living in an environment of extravagance and opulence. In contrast, third-class passengers, many of them immigrants seeking a new life in America, were housed in more modest conditions. Despite the differences, the third class on the Titanic offered amenities that surpassed those of other ships of the time, reflecting the White Star Line's desire to provide an exceptional experience for all its passengers. The stories of passengers aboard the Titanic are a tapestry of dreams, ambitions, and hopes. From young lovers fleeing searching for a new life together to businessmen traveling to close deals that would change their fortunes, each person aboard the Titanic had a unique story. Through the days and nights at sea, the lives of these passengers intertwined, forming an ephemeral but intense community. The luxurious salons and the modest third-class dining rooms became stages for meetings and farewells, for shared stories and moments that, unbeknownst to them, would be etched in history. Chapter 5. The Journey Begins On April 10, 1912, the Titanic set sail from Southampton with great fanfare. As the sea giant moved away from the port, spectators on land watched in awe and admiration, capturing the moment when humanity seemed to be reaching new heights of achievement and adventure. The first days of the voyage passed without incident, with the sea showing its kindest face. Passengers marveled at the majesty of the ship and enjoyed the numerous amenities and activities on board. From luxurious dances in first class to sports competitions on deck, the Titanic offered entertainment and luxury at every turn. Captain Smith and his crew navigated with confidence, guiding the Titanic through the vast Atlantic. Meanwhile, in the engine rooms, engineers and stokers worked tirelessly to keep the impressive machinery of the ship running smoothly, a testament to human ingenuity and determination. On board, interactions between passengers of different social classes began to weave a rich fabric of human relationships. Stories of love, friendship, and shared dreams blossomed in this floating world, where the barriers of terrestrial society seemed, for a moment, to vanish. As the Titanic ventured into the heart of the Atlantic, the sensation of participating in a historic moment was palpable in the air. The Titanic's crossing was not just a journey across the ocean, it was an odyssey into a new era, charged with promises and possibilities. Chapter 6, Toward Disaster The night of April 14, 1912, marked a turning point in the history of the Titanic. Despite the ice warnings received during the day, the ship continued its course at high speed, confident in its ability to navigate safely through any obstacle. The collision with the iceberg, at 11.40 p.m., was a dull thud, almost imperceptible to many passengers. However, on the bridge and in the engine rooms, the gravity of the situation became immediately apparent. Thomas Andrews, along with Captain Smith, quickly assessed the damage and came to a grim conclusion – the Titanic was doomed. The critical decisions made in those moments, from the delay in ordering the evacuation to the lack of lifeboats for everyone on board, would be analyzed in the years to come as factors that contributed to the magnitude of the tragedy. The initial calm gave way to confusion and panic as passengers and crew faced the reality of their situation. In the cold air of the Atlantic night, the decisions of a few would determine the fates of many. The stories of sacrifice, heroism, and despair that unfolded in the following hours would become legend, 
a testament to the best and worst of humanity in moments of crisis. Chapter 7, The Night of the Sinking The hours following the collision with the iceberg were a whirlwind of chaos and courage. As the Titanic dangerously tilted, the crew struggled to launch the lifeboats, a task complicated by the disbelief of the passengers and the insufficient number of boats for everyone on board. Amidst the tragedy, acts of heroism and sacrifice emerged. The ship's band continued playing, attempting to instill calm among the passengers. Stories of passengers and crew members giving up their places in the lifeboats to prioritize women and children would become enduring examples of altruism. As the ship sank, scenes of desperation but also of serene resignation unfolded. The last communications sent from the radio room in a frantic attempt to get help, and the struggle of those in the freezing water waiting for rescue, painted a picture of human tragedy in its rawest form. The sinking of the Titanic was not just the end of a journey, but also the end of an era of unchecked optimism. The early hours of April 15, as the Titanic disappeared into the depths of the Atlantic, marked a moment of profound reflection on human vulnerability in the face of nature's forces. Chapter 8, Rescue and Survival The hours following the sinking of the Titanic were marked by cold, fear, and desperate hope for rescue. The survivors, scattered in lifeboats across the vast Atlantic, waited against all odds for the arrival of help. The RMS Carpathia, responding to the Titanic's frantic distress signals, navigated through ice fields to reach the disaster site. Its arrival at dawn brought comfort and salvation to the survivors, who were rescued from the relentless cold and brought aboard the Carpathia. The arrival in New York was a somber moment, with survivors facing the magnitude of the tragedy and the world beginning to understand the extent of the catastrophe. The stories of the survivors, marked by trauma and loss, began to emerge, each adding a layer to the complex narrative of the Titanic. The impact of the disaster on the lives of those rescued was profound and lasting. Some became advocates for maritime safety, while others sought solace and anonymity, trying to leave behind the shadows of that tragic night. Chapter 9, Investigations and Consequences The investigations that followed the sinking of the Titanic both in the United States and the United Kingdom, sought to understand the causes of the tragedy and how something similar could be prevented in the future. These investigations shed light on a series of failures, from navigation practices to maritime safety regulations. The hearings revealed not only the questionable decisions made that fateful night but also systemic deficiencies in the maritime transport industry. As a result, significant changes were introduced in regulations, including laws requiring sufficient lifeboats for all passengers and crew, and the formation of the International Ice Patrol to monitor icebergs in the North Atlantic. These changes marked the beginning of a new era in maritime safety, with the Titanic disaster serving as a somber reminder of the importance of caution and respect for nature's forces. Chapter 10, The Titanic in Memory the Titanic has occupied a unique place in memory and popular culture, becoming a symbol of tragedy, heroism, and human failure. Over the years, the disaster has been the subject of numerous books, movies, songs, and exhibitions, each exploring different aspects of the story and its implications. The fascination with the Titanic transcends generations, partly driven by the discovery of its wreckage in 1985, which revitalized public interest and led to a new wave of research and speculation about what happened that night. In popular culture, the Titanic is often portrayed as a microcosm of early 20th century society, with its class divisions and aspirations. But beyond that, the legacy of the Titanic speaks to the fragility of human life and our eternal struggle to understand and master the natural world. Through its story, the Titanic reminds us of the importance of humility, compassion, and responsible innovation. Its legacy endures not only as a warning about the dangers of overconfidence, but also as a testament to the human spirit, capable of facing adversity with courage and resilience.